leveling your lawn can make it look amazing. The only problem is sometimes not all of us have the resources and the time to get a bunch of materials delivered to our house. So in this video, I'm at my local Home Depot and I'm gonna show you guys exactly everything you need to help you get started leveling your lawn. All right, so now that we're here, the first thing I wanna do is pick up some material for our leveling mix. And the first part is gonna be this stuff right here. This is miracle Grow Moisture Control Potting Mix. And the reason I like using this, say, versus a topsoil, is that this is sterile, and there's no chance that you can introduce weeds with this stuff. Whereas if you buy a bag of topsoil, you can introduce God knows what kind of weed into your lawn. And you might introduce weeds to your lawn that you've never seen before or never even heard of before that are like near impossible to get rid of. And aside from it being sterile, since it contains mostly peat moss and coconut shells, it's going to be able to hold in a lot of moisture. And after you level your lawn, your lawn's going to be under stress. And any type of control that we could do to make sure that we're ensuring the most moisture to feed it is going to be beneficial in the long run and you're going to get a faster recovery. Now, aside from the organic materials that we just picked up, I like to add sand to the mix. This right here is medium grit size sand. I always get the question, if I were to buy sand from the store, what kind of sand should I buy? And my answer is always this medium sand right here. What's good about this is it doesn't have super large pebbles in it that'll get sucked up in your mower, but it's also not fine enough to get washed away in the rain. So this is definitely the best option. The only problem is if you take a look at the price, it's $7 a bag, which for 50 pounds is definitely a lot of money. If you're looking for a more budget option, then you can use this play sand down here. It's the same amount of weight, it's 50 pounds. And if you take a look at the price right here, it's 327 a bag. So this is definitely a more budget friendly option. But if you wanna get the absolute best results, then I will go with the medium sand right here. So this rake right here is gonna be a key item in our leveling process. It's called the landscape rake. And what's special about this, say versus any of the other rakes, is that it has a 36 inch wide spread which is gonna give us that smooth, flat surface because the wider the spread, the more even it's gonna be. If you try to use a rake that you have like already in your shed, it's probably about 14 inches wide. And when you try to level it out, you'll end up causing ruts anytime that you're spreading that material. All right, so the next tool that we have here is a commercial size push broom. This is arguably the most important tool that we're gonna need for our leveling project. And the reason being, if you take a look at any other like standard leveling rakes that are on the market, what makes them special is that when they go back and forth, they're able to massage the dirt into the canopy. So with the landscape rake, we're not necessarily going to be able to do that. But with this push broom, when we put it on the ground, we'll be able to massage that material to get down into the canopy. So your existing grass that you have on the ground doesn't die. In my last video, I had a whole bunch of people that commented and said, you know what, George, thank you so much for recommending the Gorilla Car, because I don't know how I would have did this leveling project if I didn't get one. So I would say this is definitely almost mandatory. They're a little bit pricey, you could see $119, but it's gonna make a world full of difference when you're able to easily move your material around. Because anytime you get like these wheelbarrows and you have to pick it up with your back, it's just gonna not motivate you to continue with your leveling project. All right, so now that we got everything we need, let's head back to the house and I'll show you guys how to mix all this stuff. All right, so over here we have our first bag of medium sand. I like to open up this bag, dump it out, and then after that, I like to apply the potty mix on top of it before we add our second bag. This makes it easier to mix up while it's in this cart. So like I was saying earlier in Home Depot, this is medium grit size sand. If this were play sand, then you would see dust going everywhere. You would hardly be able to breathe when you pour it out and it just kind of becomes a mess. And personally, I don't like working with the play sand. Plus this stuff levels the lawn much better. You're gonna pay a premium, but in my opinion, it's worth it. All right, so when it comes to this potting mix right here, a little bit goes a long way. You don't need to use the whole bag to mix up in here. So personally, what I like to do is with every two bags of sand, I like to use about a third of the bag. So I'll use probably from here up. So you could just take it out with your hand and just transfer it into there. And if you see any big sticks like this, just be sure to take them out because that's not gonna help you in your leveling process. The reason it has these sticks in here is because there's a lot of peat moss in it. All right, so now that we have our potting mix in the cart, we're gonna go ahead and add our second bag of sand. And don't worry about mixing it up perfectly because when we dump it onto a lawn and we start leveling, it'll naturally mix together. And that's it, we're all good. 
All right, so we're gonna take this load down here to my bu my boulevard strip. Right now it's the middle of March, so honestly, no grass is really growing around here. Seems like I always do these videos every time that like grass is not growing, but I wanna get a little bit ahead of the season. So any of you guys that are down south, maybe you might be starting to level, I could help you out. All right, so the first tool we're gonna use is this landscape rake right here. Now, if you take a look down here, you can't see it on camera, but there's a low spot underneath this pile and also in the surrounding areas. So this landscape rake is gonna act like a butter knife spreading butter on toast. We're not gonna use the rake side, we're gonna use the flat side right here. And we're just gonna kind of smear it across the lawn as best as we can. And just with one swift pass, you see how level that is right now? Now all we have to do is just keep on spreading it out around and that's going to bring our low spot up higher. All right, so now that we have everything spread out, what we want to do is make sure that the sand gets into the canopy so our grass can continue growing. We're going to use this push broom right here and this practice is actually more common than you might think. If you go to like baseball fields, you'll see that they have brooms attached to the back of their leveling tractors. And the reason they do that is because it spreads out the sand evenly across the field and it just makes it more uniform. And in this case, the bristles of the brush are gonna act as a comb to comb the sand down into the canopy. Now again, just like using the landscape rake, you don't have to put a lot of pressure. You just wanna go back and forth gently. And as you could see over here, if you take a close look, you'll see more grass is coming up from the top. And that's the key. We want the grass to be sticking up so it can get sun. And that's what will ensure that our lawn doesn't die. So this is a very important process. All right, so now that we're done brushing our material in, if you take a look at the lawn, you can see that majority of the grass is popping up through the sand. Now it's not gonna look perfect the first time that you level your lawn, but if you just keep on watering it and throw a little bit of fertilizer on it, you'll get a full recovery in about three weeks. Now, if you plan on leveling a lawn that's bigger than say 1,000 square feet or 2,000 square feet, then it definitely makes more economical sense to get the materials delivered to your house. But there are a few situations where I think going to the store and getting bags of material is actually a better option. So the first situation is if you have a smaller lawn like mine, say it's around 1,000 or 2,000 square feet, and you don't mind taking a few trips back and forth to the store, you could definitely use bags of sand and soil to level your lawn. I've done it many times and it works out great. And the second reason would be is if you're trying to do spot leveling in your lawn and you're not necessarily trying to make it perfectly flat the whole lawn, then you could definitely buy bags of sand and soil and just do some spot leveling around the yard, no problem, that'll work out great. One of the biggest questions we get asked is how much material do we need to level our lawns? Well, as a general rule of thumb, you're gonna need about between one cubic yard and one and a half cubic yards of material to level 1,000 square feet. So for you guys who are not 100% sure how cubic weights work, if we take a look over here, one cubic yard of sand equals 2,500 pounds. And if you're buying bags from the store, that'll equal 50 bags of sand, which will be one cubic yard. So for every thousand square feet of lawn that you wanna level, you're gonna need 50 bags of sand. And hey, if you wanna know all the mistakes that you can make leveling your lawn, make sure you check out this video here. I really appreciate you stopping by to check out my video. And with that, I'll see you soon. Peace.